If you have a WeatherTight warranty on your building, it's important to know a few different things in order to keep that warranty intact for the long run. In today's Q&A Monday, we're taking a look at just that, looking at the four things you need to do to make sure your warranty isn't voided. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel, welcome to Q&A Mondays. All the questions we're gonna be talking about today are in the description below. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. Please subscribe. We release new metal roofing and metal construction material every Monday and Wednesday. Today, I have the Sheffield Metals Technical Director, Jeff Hawk, with us, and he's gonna be going over four things you should do in order to keep your weather tight warranty intact for the duration of the warranty period. So Jeff, thanks for being here. And why don't you tell me first, how does a building owner, a property owner, keep their warranty intact. As you mentioned, there's four main things a, war a building owner needs to do to make sure that they keep up with the warranty terms and conditions you know, uh, provided to them. Um, every manufacturer is gonna be different. We're gonna be using our warranty as an example today. Um, so it's always important, again, as we always talk about, to read through your documents, read through the fine print, make sure you have a clear understanding of what's going on and what you're being offered uh, in the warranty that you're getting. For us, you know, the four main things. The first one is if you do develop a leak, you need to make sure you report it in a, t in, in a timely fashion. The second one, you can't report any, perform any repairs uh, without prior written authorization. Uh, the third one being uh, you can't do any additions or alterations to your roof. And then the fourth one being, you know, you have to maintain your roof and take reasonable care of it. Awesome, so let's go ahead and jump into the first one. If a leak is discovered, how do you report that and what should you do when, when you discover that leak? Per Sheffield, the first thing you're gonna do is if you have a leak, in the warranty it says you have 30 days to report a leak via writing. The, the first thing you should do is call. That, that'd be the best thing you can do all around. Um, we do things as far as temporary repairs to, so you can stop the leaking while we're able to get somebody out there and inspect it, make sure it's covered and then we can line up the repairs to uh, get your building back to a weather tight condition. We'll probably still ask you to submit a, a, a document in writing stating what's going on, but calling's gonna be a lot faster. You're gonna make sure you get the right people on the line and, and get the fastest service that we can get out there to you. So step one, 30 days, you know, after you discover the leak, make sure you get in touch with somebody at Sheffield and let, let them know what's going on so we can get out there and basically stop any more damage from happening to the roof system if the, if the leak should occur. If you go over 30 days, technically per the warranty, it can be voided because you have 30, 60, 90, 120 days, um, you know, it could cause a lot of damage that could have been taken care of a lot faster if it had been, been reported sooner. Yeah, absolutely. And this video is called how to not void your warranty, but a lot of that just goes into follow the terms that's in the warranty. Make sure you know what's in it and, and follow those to the letter. Yeah, and it's 30 days of discovery. I mean, if the roof's been leaking for a while, but you haven't noticed it, nothing's, you know, haven't noticed any physical damage, things like that, that's one thing. But if you know you have a leak, you have a problem and you sit on it for too long, you know, it could affect the, the and void the warranty that you have issued to you. So let's say someone discovered a leak, but then sent their own crew on to try to fix it without letting anybody know uh, tell me about that. Tell me about unauthorized repairs, which is the second thing we want to talk about. I mean, the number one point of having a warranty is to be able to have the repairs made and get them made properly, and that's what you're paying for. So to come out of your own pocket and have a repair made or something like that um, doesn't really make sense to me, but it, I guess it could happen. But if you have somebody go out and repair a leak on a Sheffield warranted roof, and it's if they don't have the details that need to be, uh, how that needs to be installed, if they don't have the mat proper material, things like that, then it can't be up to par with what Sheffield's gonna require for a, a, a fix, basically. The best thing you can do, again, is go back to point number one, call, we can have the people come out there that are going to install it correctly, install the right materials, and have a long-term fix on on the situation. So, um, if you have, if, you know, you have somebody come out, they repair it, you know, it leaks later on down the road, you call us. Well, not only did you have a unauthorized repair, but you didn't report, it goes back to number one again, you didn't report the first leak within 30 days. Yeah. So you got, now you kind of double voided your warranty. So, you know, that's, that's, that's why we issue the warranties. If anything's to happen, we're here to take care of it. 
So could there be a problem if somebody has someone on their roof maybe installing an air conditioning system or a satellite dish or some type of uh, accessory that goes on top of the roof but could po potentially damage it? Would that affect the warranty? Absolutely. That goes into uh, that goes into problem number three. Uh, you know, alterations, permanent alter alterations, permanent fixtures or additions. So if you add something to your roof, say you're putting a satellite dish, like you mentioned, 90% of the guys that are going to put the, the satellite dish up are the cable company people. They're going to take, they're going to screw right down through your roof and they're just going to caulk it, you know, and that's, if that ends up leaking, that condition's not going to be covered because it, you know, one, it wasn't done by somebody authorized by Sheffield and two, you know, it wasn't done the way that we would prefer it to be done. Um, the great thing with standing seam is that you have a lot of rooftop mounted options when it comes to brackets and things like that uh, without having to penetrate through the roof. Um, you know, same thing, say you have a building and you want to add an addition onto it. Um, and it ties into the warranted roof system. If it's not going to be a Sheffield roof and it's not going to be part of the warranty, you know, we're going to have to figure out some way to create that tie-in so it's approved and you can keep the warranty that you have intact. Any, any modifications, any permanent changes that you do to the roof are going to affect it. So you want to make sure you get those approved. And it's, it's not, it's just no extra charge or anything like that as far as having something approved or having us look at paperwork or plans or any of that stuff. Um, you know, that's all just part of the warranty. If we have to come out and do an inspection, uh, there might be a charge for that, but it's usually whatever, you know, it's usually a nominal fee and, and not too much when it comes down to it, but it keeps your warranty intact and that's the ultimate goal here. Yeah, yeah, that's good to know. Do you have any um, examples of, you know, an addition that someone added to to the building or something that interfered with the roof? Can you tell me a little bit about that more? Well, most of the times I've seen somebody add an addition, it's it's usually like a walkway or they'll have two buildings, they'll build another building side by side and they'll put a walkway in. And those walkways are usually a gable roof and now you have a valley. So you're cutting panels back, you're tying a valley, you might have to remove and replace panels. You know, and, and the additions only really matter if it's tying into the warranted system. If it's next to it or below it, you know, it's not going to affect anything because you're not actually touching the warranted roof. Right. So that's that's the thing to remember when it comes to additions. If it, if it physically has to tie into the roof that is under a Sheffield warranty, then that needs to be discussed before uh, before it takes place to make sure that you keep the warranty that you already have intact. Let's move on to the last thing we want to talk about. It's taking proper care of the warranted roof. Talk to me about maintenance and long-term care. You know, metal roofs are a pretty significant investment to begin with. So you want to make sure you take care of it for multiple reasons of going along with your paint and your substrate warranties, you know, but the, the main thing you could need to look out for when you're taking care of proper maintenance and things like that, when it comes to weather type warranties is you don't want buildup creating on your roof. That's going to stop water flow and that's going to back that water up. So say you have a low slope roof, um, you know, you're in a condition where you get a lot of debris on your roof, you know, and next thing you know, your valleys start clogging up with material and that water can't properly drain from the roof. Um, you know, that's that's a big one because now you could have water back it up and, and obviously metal roofs aren't designed to have water sit there. They're all going to be water shedding roofs. Um, yeah. You know, so that's, that's the goal with that. So it shouldn't be real hard to properly maintain a metal roof. Uh, most of them have a pretty good pitch on them. Most everything will slide off, but you know, just like anything else in your, you know, you want to make sure that you take proper care of it, just like you would your car. You're not going to drive your car for 20,000 miles and never change the oil. You want to make sure that, you know, your investment on your roof is taken care of by making sure that you can visually inspect it. It's not like you have to get up there usually and, and crawl around on a roof. You can usually visually inspect it and see what's going on. Yep. So dirt, debris, uh, any kind of branches, things like that. You want to make sure that, you know, any anything large is off your roof so it doesn't prevent water from backing up or stop it from draining. What else should a building or property owner know about how to not void your warranty? Okay, so everything we've talked about so far is basically just what an owner has to do to make sure that they don't void their warranty. Um, there are exclusions in a weather type warranty that are just common, you know, things like acts of God. Um, you know, if a hurricane comes through, 
and blows a portion of your panel off and your roof's leaking, that's that's an excluded uh, scenario. So uh, I want to make sure that there's a, you know, the, you know a difference between exclusions and you know things that you can do to proactively keep your warranty in, in good standing. So um, again, always read through the paperwork. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, you know, and you know that's what we're here for. So if anything comes up and you have any questions or need anything spelled out, you know, not a problem at all. But these are the things you can do as an owner to actively maintain the integrity of your warranty. So probably one of the last things you want to think about is if you go to sell your building, how to keep your warranty intact. Uh, our weather type warranty is transferable. Uh, there are conditions. Uh, you have to have a reinspection of the roof performed, and the roof has to be found to be in its acceptable uh, warranty condition. Uh, there is a transfer fee and a reinspection fee that's paid, and the warranty paperwork is reissued to the new owner. But Again, that's a way you can keep your warranty intact if uh, you sell the building to the purchaser. And uh, it can also be used as a selling tool uh, when you go to sell your property. Well, thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. And if you have any questions, as Jeff mentioned, please contact us. Contact the technical department to ask about your specific warranty. Check us out at Sheffield Metals online for more information. And don't forget, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel. Comment down below if you have any questions as well. As always, I'm Thad Barnett, and we'll catch you next time.